To watch the latest from India Science, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press on the bell icon to get notifications on all the science related videos. The second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic has been a catastrophe. The sheer number of cases, deaths and post-COVID complications was testament to the devastation. Men appear to be more severely hit than women. This pattern is consistent across the world. What makes men so vulnerable to severe COVID-19? And what is shielding women? Scientists have grappled with this question since the early days of the pandemic. Some theories such as testosterone levels to differences in immune responses could explain this phenomena. More on that in this edition of Science Time. I'm Nidhi Kumar and you're watching Science Time, a show that brings to you the best that science has to offer from exciting developments in science and technology to futuristic solutions. And in today's episode, we will talk about why males are more prone to severe COVID-19, unlike humans, ants also do matchmaking, and dead batteries in the age of the electric vehicles. So let's go on to story number one. Well, obesity, hypertension, and diabetes raise the risk of developing severe COVID-19. Some studies suggest being male is also a risk factor. Infected men have almost three times the odds of requiring intensive care than women patients, a study showed. And researchers first spotted this bias in China, which was once ground zero for the COVID-19 pandemic. Since then, we have seen this pattern emerge across the world. And what's more, the cousins of SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV also took a higher toll on men. We'll tell you why. Some researchers think the bias is down to biology. This isn't unusual because women tend to live longer, outliving men by about six to eight years on average. That is if girls don't get killed before celebrating their first birthday. And one theory suggests that women are more shielded thanks to her two X chromosomes, which carry two copies of every gene. If one malfunctions, the substitute gene takes over. Well, men don't have spare copies as they have one X and one Y chromosome. This could perhaps make them more vulnerable. Next is immunity researchers speculate that women have a stronger immune system than men. The other explanation could be hormones. Earlier, scientists speculated that high levels of testosterone could be putting men at risk of suffering from severe COVID-19. But a new study, however, begs to differ. It proposes that men with low testosterone levels are likely to experience a severe illness. We are going to be talking more about this hypothesis. And in the study, researchers studied blood samples from 90 men and 62 women who showed symptoms and tested positive for COVID-19. And the researchers collected blood samples from all the participants to test the levels of testosterone and a growth hormone known as insulin-like growth factor GF1. The latter helps in tissue and bone growth. The average testosterone levels in male patients with severe infection was 52 nanograms per deciliter on day one of the hospital stay compared to an average of 151 nanograms per deciliter in men. The testosterone level in severe hospitalized patients further dropped to 19 nanograms per deciliter three days later. And in women, the researchers saw no link to tie hormones with disease severity. Their observation is just a theory for now. Researchers still have to iron out many details and they need to understand whether testosterone levels dropped in response to the worsened infection or if lower testosterone levels triggered the severe illness. And we'll have to wait to find out what scientists find out in their further studies. 
These studies in no way suggest that women don't get COVID-19 and regardless of your sex, please stay safe. And moving on to story number two. You thought only humans enjoyed matchmaking services? Well, be prepared to be startled. In an interesting research, scientists have identified a unique matchmaking behavior in an ant species, Cardiocondyla elegans. The sterile worker ants seem to be offering their matchmaking services to their queens by physically carrying them to a mate. The Cardiocondyla elegans queen and sits on a worker ant by holding on to its mandibles. And what's amazing is that these workers go any length to ensure their royal sister meets its match. Despite measuring only 2.3 millimeters in length, they ferry the queen for up to almost 50 feet from their residence before dropping them off at the entrance of a mate's nest. And near the entrance of the mating chamber, a site which is home to the male, male ants have lost their wings and hence stay put. The researchers observed that the worker ants skipped nests that were closer. Genetic experiments revealed that worker ants chose nests that were less genetically related to the queen. The researchers recorded 453 instances of this unique matchmaking behavior in southern France. The results of the study were published in the journal Communications Biology. But what drives a worker ant to take on this arduous task of transporting their queens to a specific colony remains a mystery. And moving on to the next story, a shift from internal combustion engine vehicles to electric vehicles has been long on the cards. Nations are trying to go green by heavily cutting down on emissions and finding cleaner ways of meeting their energy requirements. Going electric might be a way forward. China and the EU are already far ahead and India has a lot of catching up to do. Electric vehicles have accounted for just 2.9% of all automobile sales for FY19 in India. The country has set itself on a challenging mission of becoming a 100% electric vehicle nation by 2030. However, electric vehicles are not without its share of problems. Experts are worried about a potential deluge of dead EV batteries. Lithium-ion batteries, which power our smartphones, laptop and electric vehicles, are quite popular. These batteries pose challenges after they meet their end. While on the other hand, improper recycling of a lithium-ion battery can be hazardous. On the other hand, discarding them in landfills could release toxins. Well, China and the European Union have set up regulations to keep expired batteries out of landfills. The United States is expected to soon follow. However, merely identifying the issue doesn't do the job. We need solutions. The problem is that batteries differ widely in chemistry and construction. Moreover, the cells are often held together with tough glues, making it difficult to take them apart an essential step for recycling. A chemical process for its upper recycling is under development in many countries, but is yet to prove itself. The existing ways of recycling lithium include direct recycling, hydrometallurgy and pyrometallurgy. None of these three are economically viable worldwide yet. It is often cheaper for battery producers to buy new raw material rather than using recycled materials. And though we are yet to come up with an efficient and profitable recycling tool, it is still possible to repurpose and reuse spent batteries. Repurposing buys us some time to sort the issue at hand. And even when too exhausted to power our vehicles, EV batteries still have potential. They can have up to 70% of their remaining capacity, making it perfect for home energy storage. Repurposed batteries are currently being used to run supermarket chillers, light streets in Japan and power car charging stations in California. And since it has been established, the EVs have a much lesser environmental impact than ICE vehicles. We have to make that shift happen. And to plan efficiently and to have foresight is the way to go ahead. And with this, 
This is a wrap on this edition of Science Time. Mask up India and go take the jab. Keep watching India Science. Namaskar. Mm -hmm.